Tonight we're going to talk a logo author, Mary Boy, surf publishing and why she did this and how she did. Hi Mary, how are you? Hi Meiji. How long you been writing? 25, 30 years, about that time. I started when our son was little and he's 35 now, so it's been a while. Wow. How, how you choose, what makes you write a book? Um, I've always thought in books, always thought in stories. And I, it just, one day I read a book that had been published by a traditional publisher that was horrible. There are no words to say how badly written this thing was. And I, I actually threw it away. And I thought, I can do better than this. And that's really the trigger. Because even though I'd been thinking up stories, I'd never really written any of them down. But seeing what could get published and knowing I could do better, I said, well, let's do it. Do you try the traditional publisher? I did. I entered a contest. I got an agent. And she did try to get me published. In fact, we got in to a very big publishing house. But at the time, I was writing biblical fiction. Mm -hmm. And they said there was no market for that. So they told my agent to try a small press. And then they would buy the book. I don't know if they would have bought the book. I don't know if they would have forgotten about me by the, that time. But um, I did try and almost got in, but my agent opted to go a different route, and so we kind of slogged along for a long, long time, trying to, trying to find out if there was a market for what I was writing at the time, and how to get in. For you, what uh, the uh, traditional publisher and the surfer publisher, what's different between these two? The traditional publishers are the big press. We think of them, you know, Berkeley, Penguin, all of those big presses. That's traditional publishing. And to get in, you have to get an agent or you have to get an editor, which means you have to write a query letter. You have to do, learn how to do a synopsis. You have to go through all of that and then see if they'll accept you. And if they don't, and most of the time the answer is no, yeah. you have to start all over again and try another publishing house mm -hmm. and do the query letter and everything else all at the same, you know, all over again. Self-publishing was kind of the brainchild from all my experience of Amazon. And they will guide you through it pretty well, but you do all the work. Traditional publishing, they have their own artists, they have their own photographers, they have their own editors, they have all of that. When you're self-published, you have to find all of those, and you have to do it all yourself. So what make you choice to surf publish? In my case, it was sheer desperation. We live in a very old house, mm -hmm. and our insurance company gave us a letter that said, you have to do a whole list of repairs on your house, or we will cancel your insurance. And we were poor, really poor. We didn't have the money to fix the house. And I thought, I've been writing books for 20 some years. I, and I had just found out about self-publishing through Amazon. Why don't I try and see what happens? I've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. And it worked out really, really well. That's so we made the repairs. And so yeah, it, it was a good move. That's awesome. What, what do you have to do that uh, traditional publisher um, what would normally do for the authors? Well, I touched on the covers. They have all their art department. They have a massive editorial staff. So they have people who check and make sure your periods and commas are in the right place, that your words all make sense, that the sentences aren't broken. They do all of that. They have developmental editors that tell you when your plot has holes in it. And they will send it back to you and have you rewrite. But they'll hold your hand all the way through okay. and help you get it all done. And when you are doing it yourself, there are independents out there, like independent editors. But whereas the traditional publisher will pick up all those costs, you have to pay those yourself when you self-publish. 
So you have to find an editor that will work for you. You have to find a cover artist who knows what you want. Mm -hmm. And you have to pay all those expenses. Fortunately, a lot of them are not that expensive, but some of them can be pricey. What's your spirit with Amazon and Kindle? And Kindle? It, it was really, really good. Um, they give really good instructions. They have a free download book that will walk you right through the process. And so they will take you step by step in the book, explaining how to do it. They, at one time, and this because I have a cover artist, I don't worry about this anymore, but at one time they had a, a way to make your own cover and they have kind of templates. Mm. I suspect they probably still do have that, but right now with my own cover artist, I don't need that. So they guide you through and they up, you can upload your, your book in any number of formats, but they're really good at taking a Word document and turning it into a Kindle book. Mm -hmm. So they, they have really gotten very good at it. And a lot of the other companies, because there are other companies besides Amazon, there's Barnes and Noble, there's Kobo, there's Apple Books, and there's Google Play. And they all have their own self-publishing. I think they saw what Amazon was doing, decided, let's go for it. And so they jumped into the market too. And they all, some better than others, Amazon, in my opinion, is the best, um, have a way of explaining things to you, how you do it, and really good customer service staff to help guide you. But uh, for now, so many authors every day, and uh, so many new books come out every day. But if you follow the direction and you book there, but uh, how you let you, your people know this book there? Because so many there. That's the big problem now. Mm. Because when I started, I, I put my first book up and people found it. But that was about 2014. Okay. So That's that long, was long six ago, years yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, now if you put your book up, you have to advertise. So that's another expense you have to pick up. How will is an advertiser do that? You can advertise on Facebook. Oh, okay. That and uh -huh. that, there are videos you want to watch before mm -hmm. you do that because mm -hmm. you have to learn how to do that. But Amazon has their own marketing department as well. Mm. And so you run your own ads. So on an Amazon page, if you're looking at the bottom, you'll see sponsored items related to this. Those are all ads, and everybody there is paying well, you have to pay, to pay big those. money. And the reason why is because it is so big now, yeah. so huge, that you won't get noticed unless you are willing to advertise. But Facebook and Amazon are the big ones. If you are going to Kobo or Nook or any of the other big self-publishing places now, Facebook. That's where they run their ads, is on Facebook. On Facebook first. Yeah. So the price, do you think the price is different? If we put, or e-book, we put $199, or we put $19.99, that will be different They let people. They let you set your own price. Yeah. But the thing is now, with self-publishing, people like me, I admit it. I want my pr I want my books to sell, and so I will put my price at like three ninety nine, and these are two ninety nine because the competition is stiff here. So I will do that, and I would rather make up in volume. So I'd rather sell more at a lower price mm -hmm. than I would charging more, because at a certain point, people will look at your book, look at the price, and say it's just an ebook. Yeah. I, you know, I'll go read somebody else that I can pay less for. Right. When it comes to making your paperback books through Amazon, they will give you a minimum. So it depends on how many pages you have, the size of the book and all of that, but they will tell you this is the bottom you can charge. Yeah. And then you can fluctuate your price after that. Just people are getting spoiled now with all the cheap books. And so the higher your cost, the fewer books you are likely to sell. If you're putting out a picture book, 
you can charge quite a bit more because the, pub, the printing costs are much more expensive. Okay. And so Amazon, the, the bottom price they'll give you is much higher than my books would be because they're just print. There are no pictures in them. I don't, I don't need a picture. I've got my cover. Well, you, uh, you started 2014, right? Yep. 2014, you name already there. You, you pretty much in Minnesota and uh, people read your book, people always come back to you. But for the new author, nobody know the name. Like mm -hmm. uh, for example, like uh, me, nobody know me. And I put uh, my first uh, book there. You think um, uh, probably what uh, price you want to sell is not a good idea. <laughs> probably, <laughs> you know, uh, what do you think uh, we should uh, start? You price. you pick your own price. I know. I mean, you can. But nobody watched. But <laughs> nobody, but no, nobody <laughs> might read your book. Yeah. But the the with with Kindle with an ebook. Yeah. It's it's amazing that people are willing to give new authors a try. Hmm. But now you have to advertise. You have to advertise. That's and there's just important. no two ways about it. Okay. I have heard from all the other authors the days of being able to put your book up without advertising are over. Oh, right. I got in at the tag end of probably the glory days when you yeah. could throw your book up and people would find it. Now you just have to advertise. Yeah. Today, if you so put there, if you're waiting for money, <laughs> you'll be waiting a buried. long time. Yeah. yeah. The other thing that is best uh -huh. is more than one book. More than one book. More than one okay. book. Even with me, back in the glory days, uh -huh. I put up my first book. Some people found it, but when I put up my second book is when the sales took off. Oh. So nowadays, it's geared toward people with a lot of books. I have five books, and I'm being left behind because there are people who can write a book a month, a what? book a month, and they are releasing books one a month. How good! <laughs> I don't know how they me. do it. Yeah, no. I can't write that fast, <laughs> but people are doing it, and they are making a fortune, huh. six That's figures. No, yeah. But they write fast. They have a whole team. So at that, by the time they get to that point, they have like, they have their own editor, who's probably in contract with yeah, them yeah. and a few other authors, yeah. who works really fast because they have to. They have a team, yeah. They have their whole, their whole team, of everybody who's doing stuff for them. Mm -hmm. So, people like me. We do all the work by ourselves. I like, do have an editor. Yeah. That works for me. Oh, yeah. But. Um, they're, she's not making, she's not getting rich on it. <laughs> so, because I am not a fast writer. How fast the, the first book and the second book between like, within like one my, year? My maybe? first book took me four years four to years. write. The first book, okay. Four years. The, these That's other normal, books, yeah. the fastest I've been able to write a book is a year. One year. It takes me a year to write mm -hmm. a book. So this book took me a year. Okay. That one took a little longer, but all of these others took two years to write. Four years for this one, but two years for the rest. So I'm getting better. I'm getting a little yeah. faster as I go. But yeah, I am a slow writer, and there's no way I'm going to do a book a month. I think that's, that's good. You know, if you are very responsible for your book, probably. I you do know. try. I, yeah. I but want it to be the best I can do. How do you get your ideas? Ideas are a strange thing. We writers are a weird breed. Mm. And I've gotten ideas sitting on the bus, and I will see something out the window, or I will hear something. You write down right away? You have something? Most of the time, it's desperation. You have to remember this before you get home. But I do try and keep things with me, even if it's just putting something into my Fun. cell phone, uh -huh. that I will jot idea. an idea down. I have done that. So yeah. but. Things, I see things, I hear things, I watch my friends, that will trigger an idea. They just, they pop out of nowhere. So, uh, it, we writers, you know, there's this funny thing with, with writers. You'll see this ad, 
if you make me angry, I'm a writer. If you make me angry, I will put you in my next book and I will kill you. So, so that's the thing is that we're just, we're little scavengers mm -hmm. and we just find ideas everywhere yes. and we use them. Yes. That's awesome. So people may recognize themselves in somebody else's book and that may be them. <laughs> <laughs> Their author friend might be getting even with them. Okay, good. What's your favorite part of writing? Yeah, I, I like writing a first draft. I do not like editing. Stephen King's book on writing, he loves editing. I think he's strange because I hate editing. Once I've written the book, I want the book to be done. Yeah. And it never is. Mm -hmm. So then you give it to your editor, it comes back covered in red. Corrections, pages, X'd out, everything with notes and and then you have to sit down and write it again. And I hate that. I don't want my book to be done. So I'm in the process of doing that right now on my sixth book, going through all the red ink on my, it's actually now on a computer, but going through all the red highlighting on the computer and gritting my teeth and making changes. And I hate editing. I understand. But it has to be done. Uh -huh. So I like the first version. Mm -hmm. And usually when my editor gives the book back to me and there's all that red ink, it's like a knife in the heart. It's like, oh, you were supposed to like the first version. Yeah, what's the, what, um, I mean, the editing and some your ideas, you read book, I, I like to do this way, but uh, other people like to do this way, maybe it's, they think it better. Uh, and then you find out, usually? Usually, if you've got a good editor, and I have a very good one, mm -hmm. you've done a plot loophole that you don't know is there. There's something that makes perfect sense to you, mm -hmm. but you give that book to somebody else and they're going, mm -hmm. um, no, right. yeah. Yeah, this that's doesn't work, it doesn't, yet. yeah. So then, then you fix it. Yeah. The, something for you back? Well, there are two things, there are two ways. Um, you. You get beta readers, which means you can have a group of friends, and I have done this, yeah. where they know you, yeah. they know your writing, they tell you right away. and then you give them your book. Yeah. This is your sample book, mm -hmm. and you give it to them, and they will go through, and they will make comments on it. So that is a very good source. Usually with beta readers, it's like a swap. So if you're going to give them your book, you better be willing to take their book because they're also a writer, yeah. and you will take their book and you will do the same for yeah. them. Hope so it's a swap. Yes. So yes. if you don't think you have the time to hire, or to, not hire, but swap with somebody doing their book, then you go to an editor. Mm. And then you better get an editor you can trust because mm -hmm. otherwise they can demolish your book. Right. So you need people you can trust. Mm -hmm. And I, I know I can trust my editor because there have been times when there were things, where she's always very good, you don't have to make the changes, but I'm telling you, if you don't, somebody's gonna notice. And whenever she says that, I know she's right. And I make the changes, and sure enough, in one of my reviews somewhere, somebody will bring up that scene that she told me I had to put in as one of their favorite scenes. So I know <laughs> she's always right. And uh, so I listen to her. So this is editing is your not favorite thing. Not favorite. So your last favorite thing to do. Yeah, but way what, down what, at the what, bottom. What are your favorite thing? Just you write a book. The, the, just the, the planning the book is fun. Yeah. I like planning a book. I like writing the book. Um, I like description. I put a lot of description in my books because I really like writing you know, describing things, describing the view out the window. I like that. I like dialogue, and I think I'm pretty good at it if I dialogue? say so. What's that dialogue? Talking back and forth. Talk about the Oh, you like yeah, that? Yeah, okay. like, like mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. I like doing that. So that's fun. But I really don't like editing. Editing, okay. I do it, but I grit my teeth. Do, do you want to be each book stand by themselves or you want to like, like each book have a, like, like a body, like how I say that? These two 
each of them is a standalone book. Oh, so okay. you can read one of them without having read the other. Yeah. But these two are linked. And there are characters in here mm -hmm. that are the main characters that are like secondary characters in this one. All my other books are standalone. Mm -hmm. and but there's a two together. Yeah, even though these three are linked by time and place, only these two share characters. Okay. The, uh, the other is a standalone. So they're all standalone. Do you come across any specific challenges in you? Yeah. In, I, writing, in writing. I have a health condition. Health and condition. Very rare disease that I think that's another reason why I'm a slow writer is that there are days when I am not functional at all. No, so good now. And so those days, I'm not even going to try to write because guaranteed it's not going to make any sense. Right. So I fight with that. That's, that's probably my main challenge is just that my health gets in the way all the time. I want to tell the younger writer what it will be. Okay, if I, I wish I had done this myself and this is what I tell people, follow the trends, pay attention to what's going on because I missed the, the early years in Kindle I could have gotten a better foothold if I had paid attention, but I wasn't thinking in terms of publishing. I was just writing, and I was waiting for my agent to do all the work for me because that was her job. But if I had known that someday I was going to do the self-publishing, yeah. I would have started paying attention to the publishing market years before I did. It was going probably three or four years before I even knew about it. And so I missed out on the main curve and I could be much more established if I had done that. S you know, paid attention, followed the writing trends. And right now there are a number of really helpful podcasts and um, YouTube channels on writing. And if I could, if I were to recommend any, I would recommend people go to the Creative Pen P-E-N-N, -N, her name mm -hmm. is Joanna Penn. Yeah. She's on the cutting edge of everything. And she will let everybody know what is going on. So there are all these writing podcasts, there are all these writing YouTube channels, and just you know, type in self-publishing or writing or anything like that, and go through and see which ones of them are the most helpful for you. But yeah. I would pay attention to the trends. So before you try the agent, uh, my, uh, one of my friend, uh, his name is David Young, he write a blog uh, and other people think I can make a movie. He spent like $50,000 for the agent, but still nothing happened, you know. That's big money. Yeah, that, the, when you start talking about spending money like that, you're almost talking about vanity press because that's the difference between a vanity press and a self-publisher. Yeah. Because with a vanity press, you see these in magazines all the time. Right. Do you have a book you want to get out? Contact us. Yeah. And then you pay them 7,000, yeah. 10,000, whatever mm -hmm. dollars. Mm -hmm. That's a vanity press. Right. And we self-publishers who have done this all on a shoestring want to run and scream and say, don't do that. Yeah. Don't pay that's anybody right. money that's not a smart to publish your book. <laughs> you pay for a specific thing. You uh -huh. pay for cover art. Yes. You pay for editing. Uh -huh. But you don't pay a vanity press for publishing your book. That's right. <laughs> because you can do it yourself for free Yes. anywhere. Amazon, Kobo, Nook, mm -hmm. Google, Apple Books. You do it all yourself for free and you just pay for the services you need. What's the best money you spend uh, as a writer? My best money has been my covers. I'm going to hang on to this cover artist for dear life and hope nobody steals her away from me because she gets me. She's very easy to work with and she knows what I want. And sometimes. That's all from one person? One person did all my covers. Oh, wow, okay. And she's a dream to work with. So, yeah, the best money I've spent is my covers. Finish. How many unpublished finished books do you have right now? 
Okay, right now I've got the book that I'm editing. Yeah. My editor has a very small novella, just it's 30,000 words about, okay. that is going to be attached to my newsletter. And if people want to get it, you got to sign up to my newsletter, <laughs> which is on my website. But yeah, so she's got that one right now. That one will be being uploaded probably sometime before. I want it up by April 1st, but it all depends. Okay. So we'll have to yeah. see. Um, but I, I have a full novel that is a Regency in this series, yeah. and it is a time travel, and that's the one I'm editing. So then there's the, the um, newsletter book. Then I've got another short book that is going to be a sequel to this one. And then I've got another book that is in the outlining stage that will be the fourth in this series. And then I've got another book. So I've got, I think, five, five books going on. Another book that will be a fourth to this one that will be another time travel in the Regency so series. So five come together. Like uh, you can read, read like some book together, like three books together. I usually only write one book at a time. Yeah, yeah you can do because that. Because otherwise, I get all jumbled. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want my books to be jumbled. So I write one book at a time. Uh -huh. And so, but yeah, I, it, in, with all of us authors, there are books in the pipeline, mm -hmm. ideas that we have got outlined that are sitting there waiting their turn. And you've got to do this book because then you've got this book waiting and then there's a book coming after it that's waiting. And so I wish I could write faster, but I'm just not a fast writer. And so these books you just have to wait. You're awesome. You're pretty good. Pretty fast. Well, I already. try. So you are a woman. This is all romantic. Romantic. He's a, I yeah. write romance. So yeah, uh, you're a woman. How you write about uh, uh, opposite sex, like men, what he think, what the old people think, what the young kids and uh, opposite sex. What, how you? That um, was the difficult thing. For me, <laughs> it hasn't been. Yeah. I hope my readers agree. Ah. My editor who knows my husband says that she can see pieces of him in all of my books mm -hmm. so i have that advantage that i have a built-in source <laughs> in my husband and yeah. i can i can pick up different parts of him that i can put in books mm. as far as like my books usually have children i'm one of five kids in the same family uh -huh. so i've got a lot That's of experience with brothers and sisters <laughs> right. and i've had one child of my own so I can pull from that and put in, but um, the the women are are probably harder for me, I think, than the men, because women my hubby. Harder. Yeah, because oh. my hubby doesn't know that he's my source <laughs> in all of this, and that I use him as my guide. But um, for for the women, mm. I I sometimes steal pieces of friends to put in there. And that's a little more challenging because if you're using a friend as, you know, bits and pieces of them to put in, you don't want them to know. Unless you're going to kill, it's an enemy and you're going to kill them off in the next book, that's one thing. But if it's a friend, you want them to like your books and you don't want to put them in there yeah. and have them recognize themselves and not like what they see. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the females are a little harder. But maybe they do. It's, oh, I kind of read. I, that's kind of like <laughs> me, right? I never ask. <laughs> Hopefully they don't recognize themselves in there, but uh, I don't ask. When you don't write, what do you do at home? Or I sew. I sew a lot. So, oh, you sew. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I sew a lot. Um, I read, and because there are times of my health when I just literally can't do things, I do a lot of reading. I have a cat. I play with my cat. How many? Just one. I'm a, I'm a one cat at a time person. Boy or girl? He's a boy. What is what his name? His name is Vito. Vito. I have three. I have three yeah. cats. I'm a cat lover too. He's a little black and white tuxedo cat. So uh. he's got a little white chest and black and yeah. So your soul means for clothes? Or for clothes, yeah. For clothes. Yeah, Can you I sew Chinese clothes if I give you a <laughs> picture or something? I usually don't sew for other people. I sometimes do, but 
and I and I but have you done have it, it yourself too, maybe. So you you make clothes and you can sew too, maybe. Everything I have on today, I made. Ooh. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I sew a lot, a okay. lot, a lot. Wow, that's awesome. I oh. want to know more about that too, <laughs> my dear. Do you read the book, oh, book reviews? Do I read my book reviews? <sighs> they tell you not to. They really tell you don't read your reviews. I but you, I do. I do too. Yeah, yeah, I do. I read my reviews. Yeah, of course. You and, know. and if the reviews are good, it's wonderful. Yeah. And I love the good ones. But uh -huh. people can be nasty. Yeah. And oh, you that, deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, one, there was one. One person was so mean to me that I went two days almost not sleeping, double checking all my research because they were just vile about my research. And I spent two days double checking all my research. And then when I found out that I was right, I went, okay, forget it. I'm just going to ignore this guy. And so now I, I'm learning not to pay attention as much to the reviews. But... Um, I, I, st I still look. <laughs> but bad reviews are devastating. Yeah. Bad reviews are awful. So they can destroy your confidence. But they tell you don't read re your reviews. I don't know any author who doesn't read their reviews. <laughs> I think maybe all people do. I think they do. You know? So what's your best, uh, your favorite childhood, uh, when you were children, what's the, your best uh, book? Do you know what? There's a book that I read in elementary school, uh -huh. and I don't, I, I think it's probably a very famous book, but at the time, I just remember checking it out over and over again, Ferdinand the Bull. Okay. I remember Ferdinand the Bull very, very well. But then I also grew up on Louisa May Alcott and Laura Ingalls Wilder, so the Little House on the Prairie books, and... But Louisa May Alcott has Little Women, Little Men, Joe's Boys, um, An Old Fashioned Girl. I, I read them all. I, I read all of her books so, so book many kinda, times. Your book kind of a little bit uh, kind of similar, you think? I think she probably nowadays would be considered a romance writer. Romance writer, okay. I think I, I consider her a romance writer. Mm -hmm. And so, but yeah, I grew up on her. I have books that are falling apart that are hers. Do you remember the first book you read? I don't. I don't. When we were little, we had a Mother Goose book that was both words and pictures. Mm -hmm. And so it would say the, and then there would be a picture of a cat. Mm -hmm chase the and there would be a picture of a rat around the tree so it was oh. words and pictures and i remember that book and all of us kids went through that book and it's now the cover is missing and pages are loose but i still have that book and that's the first book i remember so maybe in the kindergarten oh younger than that oh younger than that younger than that yeah, as far back as I remember, that's a, that book was that's in our house. That's amazing you can remember. I, I, I probably should have thought to bring the book because I still have it. You should. <laughs> the family almost yeah. threw that book away after my parents died, and I rescued it. And so I have that book have still. Book. Falling apart, but that's I have it. That's a root, like, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What mean to you? Um, what, what is the impact that books or books in general or any specific book I just I grew up in a house where we read we read all the time my mom and dad didn't like the way we fought over the television so I grew up without a television oh no television no television I love television now but I had no television growing up and we read constantly anything we could get our hands on I remember as kids, till very big, if we forgot to bring a book to the table and we all ate breakfast when we ate breakfast, we would read the back of the cereal box. Oh. Just to read. Just to read. We read, I remember 
reading in the light under the crack of the, the um, bedroom door. Mom and Dad would have the lights on in the living room and we would be down the hallway. And all of us kids would line up reading through the light that came under the bedroom door. We all wear glasses, but <laughs> that's probably why. But we would read, as long as there was a light coming under the door, we would read. So reading, we just, we ate books. We read so Very much, important. all of us. Out of the protagonist uh, you are writing, which one do you relate to the most? The one, the one that was probably most based on myself is Fortune's Flower, my character Verbena. Okay. She's poor. She's got lots of brothers and sisters. Yeah. And that book is probably most based on myself. So this is yourself. Most, most more than the others, and not based on any of my friends that I can think of. That one really came out of me. So that that's me in that book, that's pretty you. much. Is being a writer it's more a gift or for me, it's a gift. It's not something I can ever imagine giving up mm. and even though there are parts of writing I don't like at all if I don't write I start it's like I can't not write and so ideas will come and they will just harass me in my brain until I take them seriously and start writing so it's an absolute gift to be able to take ideas in your head and put them on paper and have somebody else read them and see what you saw in your head. And so for me, it's a gift. I, it's a gift. I wouldn't give it up for anything. I think uh, today, less people read the book. Some people think, what do you, what do you think? People I think, I don't know about the really young ones, mm -hmm. but I think that Kindle and now the other ebook things More important have been a gift for people uh -huh. because I think it makes it easier for people to read. And I think even these phones that we would like to take away from our children and burn, yeah, yeah. I think are getting them to read again because there are all kinds of reading programs and, and yes, there are games and yes, they're distracting themselves with games. But I think it's made reading so available for people that I, I believe that at least as they get older they read more, but I would hope that young people read more now too, just because it's so simple to get. Right. Uh, did you ever try audiobook? Audiobook? No. Uh, that's called audiobooks. Audio. Audiobook. Yeah. In fact, um, four of these are in audio. This is the only one that's not. Oh, you already tried it. So how, yeah. how the marketing go? For me, it, it has been the people, if they want to listen to their books instead yeah. of read them, uh -huh. if they find the book that they like, they still on, buy. They will buy. The, the advantage, again, of Amazon is they give you every version. Yeah. So here's your Kindle book. Yeah. Here's your paperback book. Yeah. I think some people are now going into hardcover, but I, I don't know about that because I don't do that. But And then audiobook. And you just pick oh. your choice. You, in, in Amazon, you can do three you ways. You just pick which one. Huh. So if you advertise, and I have noticed this with my own advertising, mm -hmm. is that they they most of it is going to be ebook guaranteed yeah, yeah. but m as my sales of my kindle books go up my sales of my audiobooks go up as well because people just pick the format that they prefer oh so audiobook when you, when you do the audiobook you have to choice who can read or you do this by yourself no or i don't but um when when I got started, Amazon had just started a new company yeah. and merged with Audible. Uh -huh. 
And so they started a company called ACX. They find and when I started, it was brand new and it was a royalty share. So what that means is that for every audiobook I sell, I get half of the profits and they get half of the product profits. So we share. We share, okay. Mm -hmm. But now there are other companies that are coming out that are also doing audiobooks. So at the time I was doing it, the only one I knew of was Audible and ACX. And so I, that's where I went and I chose the royalty share. But I was really lucky in that for several of my books, I got what they call a stipend. So Audible will say, we think your books are going to sell well enough that we will pay whoever you choose to read your book oh, you a choice. lot of money. Yeah. Oh. And then they're guaranteed to get a good chunk of change at the beginning. And then they still get a share of your profits at the end. So for three of my books, that's how I got my reader is because Audible gave me a stipend for my books and I got some really phenomenal readers. So this is a real story? I mean, this, is real, this one is a real story almost. Um, no, so what these three are based on scriptures in the Bible. Oh, the okay. characters are my own invention. They're my own people, but these all start based on a scripture. You talk about getting ideas from everywhere. Yes. I would read one and I would imagine my own people there. Yeah. And that's where these books came but from. But basically it's a real story. I, I have mixed emotions. Yeah. I, I wouldn't know where to start for that. And I have, I have seen too many books that I loved as a book yeah. get butchered in a movie. And I'm very possessive of my books. I want my stories to stay intact. And I wouldn't trust, I don't think I would trust anybody to do it right. And if they're going to do it, I want them to do it right. Right means do it my way. Yeah, do your own your way, but you can just talk to each other and try to make it happen, right? Yeah. Some of the group find the, oh, I really like your book and we want to. You know how that usually you. goes? Yeah. They put a thing in there that says, that you have like um, creative input. Well, what that means is generally, we will go and we will talk to you about what we want to put in the book and then we can say that we talked to you, but we'll just go do it our way anyway. So you have no say. Once you sell them the rights to your book to make a movie, uh -huh. it's, they get the rights they can do, yeah, and they can do what they want. want. Maybe you don't like. And I don't want them to do what they want with my books. So if they were going to do it, they would have to do it my way. And I would be very, very mean. They would <laughs> have to do it my way. But maybe that's way we can make more money, right? <laughs> anyway. I'm sure, I'm sure people who put their books into movies get a, paid a lot of money. Yeah. And I don't object to a lot of money. Uh -huh. But I don't want them to wreck my books. That's more important to you. Yeah, yep. Because these books are out of my mind. Right. And this is like uh, your kids, right? Yeah. Your, yeah. Your artists, like your They're kids. my children. Uh -huh. So I only had one child, but now I have, counting S him, you have six. Five. You have six, <laughs> yes. There, there are two parts of being published on Amazon, mm. and one of them is being exclusive. And when you're exclusive to Amazon, you cannot be in Apple or Google or Kobo or you cannot be anywhere okay. else. So we, we don't have to, we, I'm, I'm not with it anyway. So. But here's the thing, when you're exclusive, yeah. you can go into Kindle Unlimited. Okay. And I'm a big fan of Kindle Unlimited because then you get paid for pages read. And it's that's where most of the people are making their money is people reading their books. And you know your books are getting read, yeah. but you can do what's called going wide, like into the wide world. And then you cannot be exclusive to Amazon. You cannot be in Kindle Unlimited. Mm -hmm. But you can then take your book to Kobo and Nook and Google Play and Apple. And some of those are bigger in other parts of the world. 
We think of Amazon because Amazon is big in the United States, Canada, um, Great Britain, and Australia, mm -hmm. but mainly just those countries. In other countries, the other companies are bigger. So if you are willing to not be exclusive to Amazon, not get the pages read money, um, which can be considerable, and go into other countries, you can do better in many instances. For like for you, going into China, now I, I know that China is very particular. Right, China, about now we kind of, like in China, people kind of even see uh, YouTube or something. So yeah, Amazon, so people kind of see in China. So if there are Chinese speaking populations in other countries that are not as restricted, mm. some of these other places might be a better bet to go into, um, who, I think, Co is it Kobo and Google? maybe are the ones that are in more languages. Mm -hmm. But so in cases like that, that might be the way to go, is going wide. Stay in Amazon, Stay in Amazon. but just Amazon. don't be exclusive. Yeah. Well, if a couple of people read, I would be happy. But I'm going to do a little more, like after they talk to you. And now, we see what happens. First, the price need to go down. Yeah. And then we share to whatever, you know, Facebook, I, I have some people in Chinese people can use, but. Now there's something for, for people who like Apple products. Yeah. There is a company that is wonderful, amazing, incredible. And what they do, it's called Vellum, V-E-L-L-U-M. Vellum, okay. But it's only on Apple. You cannot get it for Microsoft. Oh. So you, you have to be an Apple person to get it, and they say they will never go into Microsoft. Mm -hmm. But this company formats your book for you. So what you do is you put in your, it your, um, has to be a, a Microsoft Word document, yeah. but everything formats into DocX now. So you put that in, and you get to pick how you want it to look. For instance, in this, you can put in a cover picture. Oh. And this, this is cover is art. So I put in art. But then you can put in um, breaks. Where do I have my pretty breaks? And, and make all your covers so you can do something like this. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And that is Vellum does that. Let's you put in all these pretty features in your book. Yeah. But now that's a program that you have to buy. But when it comes out, it comes out for Kindle, for Kobo, for Nook, for Google, for, for Apple, I, Apple Books, all of them you get formatted. So all you have to do is go to that company and upload that format. So like if you wanted to turn your book into some of these other places, if you had an Apple computer, you buy the program, it's not cheap. Okay, like it's how an, much? Maybe? It's about, Two hundred and fifty or two hundred and seventy-five dollars now, but it's worth every penny. And then you put your book in as a Word document, and it will format it. You go through and it gives you options. You pick the options that fit you best, and then out comes this book, all ready to be uploaded to all these other places. Oh, okay. best money That's next to next to my cover artist. I forgot about vellum. That's, that's probably the next best money I've spent, is vellum. Okay. And uh, how important the keyword is? Keywords are for advertising. And yeah, people can search and uh, yeah. jump. Oh. And there again, there's another program that's really <laughs> worth buying, and it's called Publisher Rocket. Publish? Publisher Rocket. Rocket, 
Okay. It was originally KDP Rocket okay. because it was more for Kindle publishing, but now it's for everybody, and that that will you'd have you'd look them up online, but they take you through all the things they do, and they give you keywords that sell. So you can if you decide you want to try this keyword like um, spaceships and dragons. Mm -hmm. So you put in spaceships and dragons and it will tell you how many people use it uh -huh. and how much money they're making. Uh -huh. I don't know how they figure it out, but it has to do with where you rank in Kindle. Yeah, if so and many, uh, red flag is okay, we change it to other name. Yeah. Got it. So, and it, it, it all depends because some keywords don't have a lot of competition right. and still make money. Uh -huh. And those are the keywords, if they fit your book, that you use. They tell you how good or how bad. Yeah, okay. and you use that in marketing mm -hmm. for Amazon, but it also works in helping you write your advertising copy for Facebook.